The FIRS wants a constitutional amendment to um, uh, amend uh, VAT, right? Uh, um, amendment that adds VAT, right, uh, to the exclusive list. Does this request imply that, in the view of the FIRS, federal government doesn't have full legal um, jurisdiction for collection of VAT? Yes and no. Okay. Um, so if you go back um, a little bit of history. Hmm. So in 1963, we decided that we wanted to be a federation. Okay. Um, if you look at the 1963 constitution, hmm. you will not find VAT. You will not find consumption tax. Okay. 1979, we had another constitution, no VAT, no consumption tax. In 1999... Really, I think it was a decree. They just called it a constitution because it was made by the military. They just copied 1979 with some amendments. Mm. So you said in your introduction that VAT is not in the exclusive list. Mm -hmm. But I think it's even better to say it's not in the constitution. Okay. So VAT is not in the 1999 constitution. Okay. But remember that the VAT decree was a decree of 1993. So, which means we had implemented VAT for six years before we wrote the 1999 constitution. Okay. So, we're already collecting it. So, whatever we're doing at the time, everybody knew that was what we're doing. But then they wrote the constitution and unfortunately, they didn't state it there. Okay. So, FRS's point is, if this is not clear to everybody, can we just make it clear? Hmm. I don't think it's an admission that they think that uh, it wasn't the FRS to collect the tax. Okay. Okay. So... So, uh, because, you know, lawyers never agree on anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, even what status quo means, they haven't agreed. Yeah. There are lawyers who have argued, and it made a lot of sense to me when I read one of it. Mm -hmm. And they said, actually, the judgment wasn't that River State could legislate and collect VAT. They were just saying that FRS has no powers to collect. Hmm. Um, and there are provisions of the constitution that people have interpreted to mean that if the state should legislate, they can only do that for taxes or anything to be collected by the local government. Mm. So if you read the constitution, I'm not a lawyer, but if you read the constitution, you would see that it says for anything under the exclusive legislative list, it can only be done by the National Assembly to the exclusion of anyone else. When it comes to what the state assemblies can legislate, it did not put that same language there. So that is why on the concurrent list, you will find things that the National Assembly can legislate and you find those that the state can legislate. In the interest of good order, all over the world, maybe apart from Brazil, I don't know of any country where subnational implements VAT. If you want subnational to implement consumption tax, clearly don't call it VAT. Call it something else. You can call it sales tax, like they have in the U.S. So, because what happens with VAT is that it's complicated. Imagine that you sit down in Ibadan and you order something from an online store without mentioning any names. And the store is in Lagos, but the warehouse is in Oshogbo. So who's going to collect the VAT? Or if I transfer money to my friend in Abuja, so I'm transferring from Lagos, my friend is in Abuja, so the commission of the bank, who is going to collect the VAT on it? Should it be Lagos State? Should it be uh, FCT? All over the world, the OECD had prescribed what they call the destination principle so that you don't pay VAT twice. Mm. But the state don't even understand it. In fact, if you look at the laws that they've passed in Lagos and River State, it will tell you that uh, we're going back in time. So if they wanted to copy the law they want to enact, why did they not just copy the current version of the VAT at the national level? They went and copied the 1993 version. So a lot of things that we have in the current national VAT, like exemption for small businesses, are not there in their laws. Certain things you have like, how do you treat uh, international digital transaction? It's not there in their laws. Something like exemption for items like, you know, food item that is, you know. So, for example, what it means today in practical terms, because many people are sharing them on. They don't know what it means for them. Mm. It means that your barber, your tailor, your hairdresser, your makeup artist, your plumber, all of them must register now and be complying with VAT. Mm -hmm. And failure to keep records. 
is up to 250,000 naira fine. Mm -hmm. Failure to register in the first month, I think it's about 50,000. Every other month is 100,000. Mm -hmm. Some of these people cannot even keep record to save their lives. Mm. So the reason why countries have a threshold is because VAT is complicated and you don't need to burden small businesses with it. Mm. But these states are now going back in time and they want everybody to comply with VAT. So the issue there isn't that the states cannot collect VAT properly. The issue is that the current laws they've passed don't do it properly. Doesn't that mean that um, if the states rework those laws, they should be able to collect? I think first and foremost, um, we need to wait for a final determination. Hmm. You know, if, if we're arguing or we have a controversy about who owns a car mm -hmm. and you get to the Federal High Court and you win, I'll give you the car. When I go to Court of Appeal <laughs> and I win, you return the car to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you go to the Supreme Court, so we can't do that with a task law. Mm -hmm. You can't enact the law and then we start paying to you and then we say stop paying again, pay to another person. We had waited 28 years. Mm -hmm. We could have just waited a few months. Okay. So on one hand, I do think that even if the laws at the state level are properly uh, enacted, we will still have a problem with implementing VAT at the sub-national level. By the way, you know, last year, 2020, FRS collected 1.53 trillion era as VAT. And about 51% of that was import VAT and international services. So which means the VAT collected within the states, all the states in Nigeria combined, was less than 50% of the VAT collected. So w the other thing we need to try and clarify is that the ownership of VAT is not in disputes. So even though it's collected by the FRS, it belongs to the state, and that's why they are collecting 85% of the amount collected. So if you ask every state to start collecting it now, and you find out in the Lagos and River State laws, they already said they're going to collect VAT on import. Import is an exclusive legislative item. You can't have all 36 states at the border trying to confirm where your goods are going to collect import VAT. That would be chaos. In, in India, at some point, when they were doing the sales version of VAT, some of them were mounting borders between states to clear goods, and people were waiting for three days. You don't want to go into that. But they eventually figured it out. They figured it out by fixing the way they were collecting it, not insisting that state must continue to collect. Mm. So at the end of the day, you have to make sure that whatever you do is in the overall interest of the economy and of the people.